Well, good morning, Relevant Church. How we doing? Come on, let's stand and worship together. Worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free, free captain, and break every chain. Oh, God, you have the great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken. Yes, Lord, we're so thankful that we can worship you in your house this morning, God. I pray that you would receive our praises as we sing songs unto you. As the, as the Spirit was moving, only the water Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us 
As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me.
He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. I still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength. Cause I built my life on Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful in every season. So I Come on! He 
Father, my prayer is just simply this. We've got one more song before we go into the message. But God, I pray that as we are in your presence, Lord, would our praise go up unto you like incense that pleases you. Would you hear the cry of your people as we sing out to you, God? You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. See, great are you, Lord. It's your So we pour out a praise, pour out a praise to your bread in our love. So we pour out a praise to you, oh, Great are you, Lord. You live a life, you are love. Darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Oh, great is your name in all the earth. Sing great are you, Lord. So we pour out a praise, we pour out a praise into your praise in our love. So we pour out a praise to you all, into your praise in our love. So we pour out a praise, we pour out our praise into your praise in our love. So we pour out a praise to you all. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Oh, lift it up and say, All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great. So we pour out a prayer, 
something about the song that we were just singing that talks about like the whole earth is singing I want you to think about the fact that the whole earth is singing when the rivers flow over the rocks they're singing out of praise to their creator when, when the leaves rustle in the forest they're singing out of praise to their creator when the birds are singing in the air, they're singing out of praise to their creator. And yet so many times we come into church with our arms folded saying, impress me, God. And the word of God tells us that if we don't cry out, the very rocks will cry out his name. We are, we are the one Thing in all of creation that gets to sing the praise of Jesus back to him. We get to declare his name to him so that others can hear. I just wonder, are you letting nature cry out the name of Jesus rather than yourself? Are we allowing everything else to cry out his name and yet we are remaining somewhat silent? I wonder if we might be able to, to go into that bridge again where we are just declaring that the very breath that I have is going to declare Him. It's going to praise Him because I can't do anything else. And I know this. Some of you are here today and you're like, Paul, I don't have anything to sing about. I get it. Sometimes, when you don't have anything to sing about, it's the only thing you can do. So why not just try it? Say, God, all I can do is sing because everything else doesn't seem right. But I know that in spite of what is not good in my life, you are good. And I will declare that you are good because you always are good. Can we just sing that I don't know where, Edgar knows where he's going. Let's just sing that again. Sing it out from your gut, from where God is moving in your life. And though the earth will sound no praise, 
hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Sing all the earth, will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Oh, all the earth, oh, all the shout earth. Your praise. Sing all the earth, will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great. Are you up for the times hey, of the earth? All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will say, We pour out our praise to your prayer in our lives. So we pour out our praise to your Oh, it's your, it's your prayer in our lives. So we pour, oh, we pour, Jesus. Oh, we, it's your prayer in our lives. So we pour out a praise to you only. This is why. Because great, oh, his name is great. Great are you, Lord. Oh, Holy Father, that bless, bless us my heart to be able to hear your people cry out your name. God. Great are you, Lord. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your love. Great is your endurance for me. Lord, I pray that you would be honored and lifted up this morning. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. You can be seated. We are so glad that you are with us today at Relevant Church. My name is Paul Worth, and I have the lovely Susie with me today. And uh, we're so glad that you guys are here. I've got a couple things. How many dads are in the house today? How many dads we got in the house? How many dads of daughters do we have in the house? I want you to stand up if you got a girl. Stand up if you got a girl. Stand up if you got a girl. All right, here's the deal. All of you should see Pastor Aaron right after the service and sign up for the Daddy Daughter Dance on Friday night because your girls want to see night. you dance. This Friday, right? This Friday night. This Friday night right here. You can dance with your daughter. You got to go ahead and sit down. It is a great time. I will tell you, I, I've been several times with Ashlyn, and it's a lot of fun to watch dads. You're wallflowers just like you were in middle school. Like you're afraid to your, your girls are out there dancing, and you're like, where, where's the wall? Where's the wall? By the end of the night, where's the guys are having more fun than even the yes. daughters. So, dads, make sure you It doesn't you matter the up. age. They can be 5, 2, or 15, 15, 25. Bring, bring your daughter. Yes, bring your daughter. It'll be a great time. But what do you got, Suze? All right, so we have, again, um, Scott out in the foyer. He's with our foster um, care program that we partner with, um, the Royal Kids. And they are needing some mentors and camp counselors and people to volunteer for their camp coming up in March uh, over spring break time. So if you have that flexibility and you can come help um, in any way, shape, or form, see Scott out in the foyer. And also, ladies in the house. Are there ladies ages, in the house today? Yep. I there any ladies, ladies in the house? My girls, my girls. So we are, again, um, going to be joining the IF conference, which a lot of women are like, well, what is the IF conference? And I, I kind of say it's a lot of, like, ladies doing TED Talks. Okay. Does that make sense? That's good. Yeah, so, but, they're, but it's God's word, and they're challenging us um, to be influencers in our world for Jesus. And so we're going to come together, and if you don't know what it's about, I'll be out at the table, too. So look for me, and if I'll get you signed up. If you don't know what it's up. about. <laughs> if if you don't know if, what it's about, join see? if that's right March third and March third and fourth. March third and fourth. Ladies, sign up. I will tell you. Now, Susie is kind of crazy like this, but like 
they're going to be like multiple women's slumber parties like all over all over the county. Now you don't have to spend the night, but you don't have yeah, to. my girls are coming over and spending the night. We're, I know. We're and do so that. It, it's it's I mean that's what I think that's what girls like to do. So it's going to be a great time. I will tell you this, ladies. Sometimes you need to get away from your husband and you need to get away from your kids. This is the perfect opportunity to, to look at your husband and go, hey, guess what? You got the kids tonight. I'm All going out night. with the girls. Yep, yep, spend the night. And tonight. so sign up today. Yep. It's going to be a great time. So we've got some Valentine gifts to give away. That's right. We've got some Valentine gifts because you know what? The Hallmark holiday is on Tuesday, okay? We all know that. We all don't like it. So here's what we're going to ask. We are going to ask, is there a couple that literally has their anniversary is on February 14th? Is anybody in here, your anniversary on February 14th? Yeah, stand up quick. Popcorn. All right. Ha, who, who has the closest anniversary anybody to February? Anybody in February. Anybody in February? Any anniversaries no, in February? You're, oh, that's you can't win. Your staff, you're not winning. You're, you're not Besides winning. You're gonna them. be here in a minute. No. Nah, no. How about January? Do we have a January? Jan when is it? Are well, you why the are you raising? Oh, come on. Wait. Is there another one? Yeah, it's February. Valentine's Day. Wait, we said that. Okay, well, you're gonna win. You're gonna come win, on. and you're gonna win. That's okay. We have two prizes. All right, here we go. We got two prizes. Happy anniversary. All right. Well, guys, thank you guys so much for being here. If you are a guest with us, there is a card right in the back of your seat pocket. We would love for you to fill that out, or you can scan the QR code, and it will let us know that you are here with us. You can take that, exchange it at our Next Step Center for a gift. We'd love to say, hey, thanks for being here. Thanks for being our guest. Last week, we launched into our brand new series called DIY Relationships. And what we realized is that whether you're married or single, we're all trying to do our relationships by ourselves. And so today... You guys are going to get the privilege of hearing from another one of our staff couples, Alex and Claire Desserre, and they're going to share with you a word that God has given them today. Check out this bumper video and then join me in welcoming Alex and Claire. God bless you guys. Are you in a relationship or want to be? Well, I'm Tater Tanner, and here at Tanner's, we've got all the tools you need to help you succeed relationally. <whistles> Want to change the tone of your relationship? Well, we've got a wide selection of paint to help you do just that. Tired of not seeing eye to eye? Well, lather that baby up with compromising drag. For you ladies, are you tired of losing arguments? Well, try Bring It Back Black, because nothing seals a win like bringing up the past. Shh. All right, fellas, aren't the list of standards today a mile long? Well, here at Tanner's, we've got a plethora of brushes to help you brush them off. Really? I know what you're thinking. With all this work, there's bound to be a mess. Well, we got you covered with our tarps. You see, our patented tarps have two functions. One, the prevention of spills, and two, covering them up. Busted. So come on in and see me, Tater Tanner. And remember, why go to therapy when you can do it yourself? I made it, I made it, I made it. Oh my gosh. Totally missed that leg. All right, I missed the leg. Okay, cool, cool. Good morning, everyone. How y'all doing this morning? Yes, let's go. All right. Man, I'm excited. And obviously, the one to my right is not super excited. Um, so I'm going to need y'all help today, okay? We're going to make her feel super comfortable, all right? This is Claire. Say hi, Claire. Oh, never mind. Hold on. She gets applause, okay? <laughs> I'm Alex. Mm, well played, y'all. Well played. Okay, all right. We see who we're honoring here today. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, man, well, first and foremost, we just uh, want to give honor what honor is due. Uh, we just want to say thank you, you know, Pastor Paul, for, like, seeing value in us and just putting us up here um, and also finding a way to torture my wife as well. Uh, and so, like, for me, in my household, we love that. So, uh, you know, thank you for that. So uh, before we get started, let's go ahead and pray. Uh, God, thank you so much, Lord, for um, the word that's going to go forward today, God. Man, we thank you for also keeping us uh, on on this path, Lord, to be able to deliver this, God. Uh, as you know, man, it's just been just a rough week. 
Uh, and so we just thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but also, God, to be able to provide some of that light to um, your people today, God. And so I just thank you for everything that's going to happen today. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So uh, you guys have been tracking, you know, with uh, DIY relationships now for two weeks. So this is, you know, week two. Um, and so clearly this is a relationship series. And so uh, why we're up here this morning is to be able to speak to wherever you're at in your relationship, whether it's singleness, uh, dating. Uh, we're also going to be speaking to marriage, divorce, and the broken up. Um, and I think like a lot of times that can be the marginalized uh, group of people, but you're in a season as well. And so our aim today uh, is really just to be able to um, really get you to understand what the one is, but also for singles and uh, married people to be able to, to recommit to their season of life as well as divorced and broken up. Um, and so uh, we've, we've been tracking with a couple of questions, right? Um, on, in, uh, on social media, uh, some of you have sent emails as well. And I think like for us, we've, we found this like a central theme for most people, like regardless of where you're at. And it's uh, the one, right? Oh my God, I have songs written for her, you know, a little cassette tape, you know, she completes me, he completes, right, that, that kind of one we're talking about. And so the idea then is, you know, to kind of hone in on that, since this is what you guys are asking about. Um, and it may look like the way that the world looks like, you know, for us, but really what we wanted to do was kind of flip the script on that. Um, and so what if I told you, though, that uh, even though marriage is the ultimate goal, that that really isn't the truth? Matter of fact, like, you know, for those of you who are looking for the one, what if I told you you're not even looking in the right place? Or, you know, um, what, what, what's another question? Are you ever the one. Mm, right. Are you ever going to find the one? Um, I think like that's like the eternal pursuit, right? Right under happiness is finding the one. Because if you find the one, pretty much, right, huh, completes me. It's going to be like the greatest thing ever, right? Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. So you guys, are you guys, you guys all right this morning? Yeah? Take a breath. It's okay. We're not attacking y'all this morning. It's, it's really just going to be whatever I say. Claire's going to make it sound much better. So, um, oh, I even got like a, a little sign for y'all today. Let's Let's try this out. That's so good. It was like half fake laughs, half like, oh, my gosh, he's going to do this again today. So good, good, good. Um, and so, you know, along with that, right, um, I think the best experience is other people's experiences, right? Um, and so we're just going to tell you guys a little bit about us. Uh, so we just celebrated our 10-year anniversary. Yeah, 10 years. All right. Thank you. The clap makes it sound much better if I'm wrong. So I appreciate that. Uh, Ten years, uh, we went away for a little bit, so we missed last week uh, here, but we definitely tuned in uh, to, obviously, you know, Hunter was dying under the AC, so that's why I got my jacket, and we talked a lot about sex, right, and so that was that was cool, um, and, you know, Pastor Paul and Susie really brought it home, too, a lot of Susie really brought it home, you know, she had the nuggets, so I plan on following suit today, um, and so, yeah, so how did we meet um, MySpace, right? Yeah, and so, um, dang, that really dated us. So, like, that was, like, before Facebook, right around the time of, like, LimeWire and Napster. <sighs> I'm going to get arrested today. But, yeah, you know, like, right, you know, that was before you guys had your other ways. Um, and so, yeah, I had MySpace. She was not on my top eight. For those of y'all who you know, that's, like, the petty way of, like, saying th they're my best friend and the rest of y'all aren't. Um, I'm just collecting other friends so I can interchange them every week. Yeah, so that was us. Um, and We didn't even know we were yeah, on each other's friends. We didn't know. I don't even know how she snuck into that, but she definitely got into my DMs. Um, but anyways, yeah. So she was like, she was thirst trapping back in the day. If y'all don't know what that means, it's basically she was, she was getting some attention. I made a post that yeah. I was going to delete my MySpace because it was Facebook transition. Mm, she was going to delete her MySpace. And so I was like, nah, bruh, don't delete your MySpace. So, you know, your boy had it like that. So two messages in, already got the digits. So, you know, it was a hot commodity. So basically, um, you know, to, to kind of round out that part of the story, she was begging me to be her boyfriend, all right, for like a solid, like, week. So we hadn't met yet, and I thought she was... Um, Hispanic. I thought she was Hispanic. You thought I was Hispanic. Yeah, yeah. So she totally catfished me too, which is fine. All right. Clearly, it worked out. Not saying you should, you know, 
fall for a catfish. But anyways, like that was before the show Catfish. Uh, so we, we started going out before I even met her. Then we went on our first date. And, uh, you know, right, I got to plan the first date. I got to pay for it anyway. So what do you think we do? The most romantic thing ever, right? We, we go bowling. Because, duh, what's more romantic than something and I hate competitive? Bowling. She does. Yeah, she didn't say that until after I paid. So that was awesome. Um, so how many games did we play? Half. Because the whole night she wanted to talk about everything that was important to her. So yeah, um, she still owes me $21.50, which is fine, all right? She's still paying for it with her niceness. And, and if you guys can laugh, it's not a tense moment, all right? Okay, she owes me, y'all don't, all right? It's okay, you're, you're good. Um, but fast forward, right? So you know, we're dating. Everything was like really fast, whirlwind. We move in together. Um, no, we weren't married. And so like most things that you do outside of the will of God, right? Um, it starts off really great, and then it crashes and burns really, really fast and really hard, right? Um, and it starts to hit things in life that kind of just like bring things into focus. Uh, so, so you know, eventually we broke up. Do you want to tell that story, or do you want me to tell that story? The one where you were jumping on my car? <laughs> first off, first off, it's not up, all right? We're not laughing. First off, back up. This is out of order. First, okay. Here's what you're going to know, right? If you've ever spent time with us, you're always going to have two versions of the story. The first version is Claire's IMDb, only to two lines. No, it's only two lines. There's like no fluff, right? Mine is more colorful. Details, you'll get credits, you'll get six trailers. We'll go with like six, you know, movies into the franchise. It'll be fun. So clearly this morning we're going to go with my version. Um, so, yeah, we... Um, so, you know, we had like a big argument and, you know, it was terrible. Clearly, we weren't doing things right. Uh, and uh, she was like, oh, you know, I'm breaking up with you. And I was like, I'm breaking up with you. And then she was like, I'm leaving. And I said, nah, you're not. And so somehow she found her way into the car. And so Claire had like the most beautiful car back then. She had like great taste in obviously men, right? And, um, you know, in cars as well. Yeah, you can laugh at that too. Yes, men, that's me. Nobody believes that one. All right, cool. It's fine. Um, and so she had, like, this 1996 Honda Accord that used to be green, right? And so, like, the paint was, like, all chipped off of it. And this was, like, in the heat of summer, all right? And we were mad. And I was like, how can I stop her from leaving without dying in the process, right? Because I'm not going to jump behind the car. Um, so I jump on top, right? And uh, all the neighbors were just, like, outside listening to me, you know, go from French to English to like whatever gibberish is coming out of my mouth um, and uh, yeah the car was hot as you would imagine burning my, uh, my, my shins it was great which is why I wear jeans all the time no I don't don't look at my don't ask me about my kneecaps alright we're fine but anyways that was uh, that was our nice little breakup so I went my way I went back to my parents because that's the sensible thing to do right and, um, I yeah. went to my parents uh -huh. but then I started attending church yeah, so I didn't go to church. I was just like, I'm just going to, you know, deal with, like, this trauma on my own. Because um, one of the things that, like, we went through, you know, in our situation was um, my parents didn't respect our union, right? Like, we decided to get, uh, to get a department together, to live together. And to them, of course, it was like we're living in sin. And so, like, a lot of the things that really created friction and tension in our relationship was, you know, my mom really trying to, like, mold my identity and really it was like her living within our relationship which looks a lot different when you're married and so um, the boundaries of that were just very blurred and so that really affected us in a really terrible way um, and so where I used to see her as the one I stopped seeing her as that right because we're broken up and I'm like oh you drove off while I was still on the hood of the car I can't believe you did that yeah that uh, the asphalt was definitely a lot worse than the top of that car um, but you know, that, like, that, whole, that whole thing changed my perspective on it. And, um, and I think it was the same thing for her as well. And here's what we found, is that as like the world is always looking for the one out there, God redefined that very differently. Um, we, we think that it's someone that's going to like complete me. They're going to make me feel great. They're going to, you know, have the great first date like we attempted to have. Um, you know, things are always going to click. But really, God's God's flipped the script on that. And what it is, is it's not her being the one, it's me. 
The one is you. As we're chasing for something outwardly, the one's always been looking in the mirror. And so God actually values individuality. He values your identity. And to God, you are the one. And so that should change the way you see that in perspective. Because like even in Genesis, right, the first book, God paints the picture for you. He created you in his image. So you're literally a reflection of that. God didn't create you and then, you know, homegirl. He didn't create you and your significant other. He uniquely designed you to be you. And David even writes about how he created us um, in Psalm 13, 19. Psalms 139. Oh, one, ooh. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's room. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. And so for that, right, it's, it's really to just paint the picture that as you're trying to find someone who is supposed to, like, bring you happiness, right? Because, like, that's what we do here, you know, in, in society. We're always trying to find someone who makes life easier. If I could just have someone else, it'll just make it better for me. If I could just, like, have, you know, a spouse or if I could get married or, like, that is what we're looking for outwardly. But God is redefining that as, no, I created you first. I want you to be okay with you being the one. And so, like, let's bookend this for, you know, singles, dating, divorced, and even married, right? And so let me preface this. Anything that we say for singles also works for married couples. And anything that we say for married couples, and I know this is going to sound like super crazy, is also supposed to work for divorced and broken up. Because God respects every single stage of that. And so whatever we're going to produce for you guys this morning, I hope that you take that for whatever stage you're at in this morning and you apply it the same way that you would if you were single, divorced, or whatever. Because where you're at in your relationship matters. And so for singles, let me ask you this. Are you okay with waiting? And for married couples, when is the last time you saw your spouse as the one? And so (laughs) that sounds like maybe a foreign concept to some of y'all, but like, we get into these relationships, right? And we get into, uh, you know, dating and you decide, oh my gosh, like, you know, I'm going to marry her. Well, usually, usually it's, you know, the lady, the woman who's like, I'm ready to get married. Let's get this ring. And you're like, oh, my bank account, it kind of sucks right now, but I'm going to find a way to pay for it. So you decide, all right, now's the time to get married to her, right? The idea, though, is at some point in line, you've decided they're the one you want to marry. Um, but here's the, here, here's the thought to even like switch that around for you, right? So singles, right? Are you, as I asked, are you okay with waiting because there's a portion for you later? The secret to find the one if you're single, dating, married and trying to recommit or divorced and trying to find new life or broken up and you know, you're broken up and hurt is that you have to be okay with waiting. We're a microwave society. We don't like that. 30 seconds, you're like, oh my God. 30 more seconds. And it's like, we're not okay with just sitting and waiting. But here's, here's what I think what you'll find is the secret to waiting, is that. You're going to attract the right person, not the right product. May sound profound, may sound very surface level, but let me, let me expound that for you guys, right? Here's what's attractive. What's attractive is someone chasing after God. It's easy to say this in a, in a church full of Christian people, but instead of finding someone else, right, who is earthly, who is flawed, who has issues, who brings baggage, you see how I'm painting this picture? who also has their own environment that they grew up in, who also has their own trauma, chasing after God is the one thing that will complete whatever it is that's in your life because he's the one who created it first. He's sovereign over everything. And what happens is that becomes attractive and magnetizing magnetizing to people. Case in point, right? We go to youth group. Oh my gosh, I'm carrying all the chairs. You've seen the meme or the gif. I'm carrying all the chairs and the ladies are like, wow. That's a man of God right there, right? Or like, you know, you go to like a young adult or whatever, you're like, ah, oh, it's a bunch of singles. And you're like, 1 Corinthians 6, 7 says, and the lady's like, oh my gosh, he knows his Bible. But really, you just like recited it right before you got to young adults. It's attractive, y'all. It's okay. We've all done it. 
I've d- not, no, actually, I've never done that. That's, I, I don't have that kind of memory. But that's the thing, though, right? And you think about, like, chasing after God. It takes your focus away from finding that person and making them the object of your whole entire existence, and it points it back to whoever created you in the first place, right? And so even in this season of waiting, as you're chasing after God, chase with expectancy, right? Be selfish with your relationship with God. Think about it. You don't have to share it with anyone else. You ain't got nobody telling you, oh, you read that scripture wrong, or oh, you know, we should pray when you don't want to pray. It's literally you and God, and that's it. And so, you know, making that the object of your desire and the reason why you live really makes that attractive to other people. I'm literally giving y'all game, right? For those of you who are single, broken up, or like looking for someone else. But also, this is for married people also, right? There's nothing more, well, yeah, let me count this one. There's nothing more, ex- it, it's nothing more attractive than a spouse that's like, hey, let's pray, you know, tonight. Yeah, it can be real boring, trust me. It can be so boring. But I tell you what, if we're chasing after the same thing and God is the object of that, God's going to give us the portion for that, right? And for um, married couples, right, what that brings is a new level of commitment and love for each other. That's really the byproduct of that. Make sense? He knows what what you want. Um, God says in his word he knows the desires of the heart. Yeah, and so if he knows the desires of your heart, right, and also in Genesis, remember, he, he created all of these things. He created the sky, the earth, all these animals. Don't know why he did snakes, because, like, that doesn't make any sense. Um, lizards, too. That's like snakes with legs. Like, I don't get that. We'll talk about that when we get to heaven. Um, but, like, doesn't make sense. But he created all of these things. And, and key in, on G- in Genesis, he creates you in his image. And then he goes, hey, Adam, wow. It's not good for you to be alone. If he said that for Adam, how much more so is it true for you as well? He wants someone for you. And so, yeah. So the how. How do we find the one? Hmm. Have you taken inventory of yourself? Uh, So inventory, all right. So again, if you've like ever spent time with us or, you know, this is something that we've walked with like other couples with, which is uh, honestly what I think is one of the most important skills to continue to cultivate, which is to take inventory of yourself. What's that look like? It looks like pretty much humbling yourself and uh, asking yourself, am I even the person that the one that I want would actually want back? Right? That's like not a fun thing to think about. I want someone who's got, I love this one, all right? I'm not going to tell you who it is, but yeah. I, I want someone who's got like, you know, like six houses and like four boats and like, you know, uh, a great family or whatever, which is like legitimately, that's okay. There's somebody out there that exists like that as well. But lean in a little bit here. Uh, does that person want who you are today? Taking inventory of yourself is looking at your mirror and saying, you know what, like, where am I right now? Am I even in the capacity to be able to, like, have someone like that? Matter of fact, do I really want that person? Uh, Because a joke that we say all the time, right, in in our house is like, um, uh, you know, yeah, you want a big house. Claire wants a Barnuminium. She finally got me around to doing that. Uh, so she wants a barnuminium with like six six rooms or something like that. Listen, somebody's got to clean that up. That's a lot of rooms to clean, all right? I'm thinking practically. We don't need all that. We're already struggling enough as it is with... Because you definitely don't clean. Hey, man, I thought you said her mic was going to be off. <laughs> hey, no, that's not... Is that Paul? No, Paul didn't corroborate that. No, I said, <laughs> clean, all right? I'm a spot cleaner, all right? I'm... I'm more like his office is up there if you want to don't do that right don't now. do that all right now anyways we're gonna get back to that 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 took a turn that's not even in the notes all right we're not gonna no 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 anyways so for for me right what that looked like taking the inventory of myself like when we were broken up I really had to look at um like who am I really and recapture like what my identity was um and one thing that I realized is that along the lines we became uneven um and so even in that friction you know, there was a lot of tears, a lot of crying on her side because I don't cry. And, he you know, doesn't I have d- emotions. I d- hey, it seems like every time you pick up that mic, 
is like the wrong nuggets, okay? They're like all about me. First off, I do emote, okay? Spell emote. A-L-E-X. Okay, here's what I want y'all to know, right? When we prepare a message, there's always notes, okay? We go by notes, and sometimes we write jokes inside the notes, and Claire decided this was the one she was going to write. So thank you guys for laughing at the, <laughs> the one joke she, she wrote in there. That's good for you, all right? It's okay, guys. It's, it's, it's not tense, all right? I'm the subject of her laughter. Um, and so that created, yeah, so anyways, that created friction for us. Um, and for me, you know, growing up, purpose was like the big thing for me. Um, my parents drilled that into me hard, you know, like, every, you, you guys know my story, go into a room, be the smartest person in the room, always do the right thing for the right reasons, for the right people, all this other kind of stuff, and so purpose was never something that I had to go and find and figure out myself, my parents drilled that into me, the thing though is, I didn't know how to do that with someone else, um, and I struggled knowing exactly that, why I'm here, um, that led me to not feeling purposeful, and not seen and always in the background. Mm -hmm. But now she ain't in the background no more. <laughs> Here comes Claire. But anyways, uh <laughs> I just got to prop her up for that. Well, go ahead. Um, realizing these things was a small step forward, but what we needed to seek was balance. The balance we're talking about is found in 1 Corinthians 3.8. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. Mm -hmm. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. So anyway, so what, what basically what that means is like when you get together with someone, right, whether you're single, dating, married, divorced, broke up, trying to find new life, whatever, in all aspects of it, especially for married couple, right, as you recommit, who you are matters in the relationship first, first singularly, right? God honors marriage. He honors that union. But remember, we're not all planters. Neither are we all waterers, right? And so... I know this is going to sound, you know, kind of harsh, but here's here's the reality of it, because this is something that we had to walk through as well. Um, a lot of the mistakes that we made, we look back at them now, and it's like, man, these were just stupid. Like, for me, I wanted her to, like, think and process things like me. Um, and then... I wanted at times for him to know what I was thinking. Yeah, and so, like, me, right, I are every single day, what's the next thing that I could do? So I wanted her to like think like that, to like, you know, work hard like I did and do things the way that I wanted them to be done. And I wanted him to see me how I see me. But the issue with those statements, right, is that um, they breed unrealistic expectations and they create unmet needs. And that's where the friction and the tension comes in. And that's honestly where like being broken up or being disengaged in marriage or um, you know, coming out of, uh, you know, breaking up, that's where that creates that tension that we always try to fulfill in someone else. Um, the idea, however, is that somewhere along the lines, we forgot that you may be a planter and I may be a waterer, or that, like, that individuality that God, um, you know, values got lost. And, um, you know, so the idea then is this. How do you avoid that or fix that? And that's that's very simple. So I'm going to give you a harsh one first, right? Uh, this one is going to be like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. But it's okay. We're going to get through this together. You have to embrace the differences. Because in a relationship where two people are the same, one of them is unnecessary. Why would you want to be looking in, look, just be like in a, in a relationship that doesn't give you range? That doesn't give you more, right? Like, it can even become redundant even, right? The whole, like, he completes me, that's something that we make it as, like, a filter for our relationships. But let me ask you this. When you look around, right, and you, you even, like, people in your small groups or, um, you know, people that you do life with, the idea is always when you look at these couples, oh, that makes sense. People who are looking on the outside looking in, right, they don't think, oh, they're the exact same doesn't work like that. What it works like is it's a union, right, of two people who have very individual identities brought together where God honors that and brings you as one. Does that make sense? It's, it's okay. This says laugh, but you know, you can say, <laughs> oh man, this is tense. Y'all didn't like that one. It's okay though. And the second thing that you have to do is you have to take inventory. 
right? Like I said, that's like one of the, the biggest um, skills that you can get. To so always ask yourself, who am I right now? Where am I right now in my life? And am I okay, God? Like if you don't bring anybody to me right now, am I okay continuing to chase you and you only? And the third thing is exactly what I just said, which is to chase God. Because at the end of the day, if, if he is exactly who he says he is, and he wants a portion for you too, and he does w doesn't want you to be alone, the byproduct of you chasing after God is what? It's for you to have someone to chase him with, right? Um, and so now we're going to give you guys like something practical, all right? Um, the, the first week, we had these like uh, composition books, okay? Uh, these composition books, hopefully you guys brought them back. Um, if you didn't, there's some on that table back there. Um, I have trust issues, y'all. Uh, the practical steps that I'm going to give y'all, uh, I'm not going to wait for you guys to do them later on tonight, okay? Because I know life happens. It gets lost in the shuffle. So this morning, we're going to do this exercise together. Don't worry. I know half of y'all are already freaking out. What are we going to do? Something super simple. Get out your composition books. If you don't want to get up there like somebody like me would, you know, because I don't want people to know that I didn't bring my composition book, it's totally okay. Get one. Or open up your notes app. I'm assuming all of you guys made the great decision of getting an Apple phone. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what Google phones have, um, but we're just going to pretend it's notes. Also, get that out. And so first I want to talk to singles, uh, dating, divorced, or broken up. Um, taking inventory looks practical like this. Uh, I know I, I, I've been saying, what, well, who am I right now? There's a reason why the right now is so important. A lot of times when we ask ourselves, like, who am I, right, it can get so confusing. Like, we're just throwing stuff, like, into the deep, like, oh, my gosh, I'm just, like, I'm a good person, or, you know, I love, you know, food, or something, something generic like that. But I want you guys to get so granular that you'll always remember this skill as something that can really create change in your life. So when you ask, like, who am I right now, I want to point you guys to a few resources. On our sermon resources online, we have uh, assessments, okay? Um, and we'll also be putting some more in there as well. In these resources, what you'll find is, like, uh, assessments like the DISC test. I love that thing because, like, a lot of people tend to lie to themselves and be like, oh, my gosh, I'm, like, a type A or, like, I'm, you know, super, like, you know, leadership or whatever. But what you'll find is if you're really honest with yourself, you'll find exactly who you are right then and there. And I think like we've all taken at some point in time or somebody's forced us or a spouse, like Claire has, uh, the, um, what is it, the love, uh, the five love languages. It's funny because that's a perfect one to show you that you do change. And I think a lot of times we take these tests thinking that they're finite, but I want to challenge y'all to take these tests as markers in your life. This is what I need right now. This is who I am right now. This is what drives me right now. Um, and so we'll have these assessments online for you guys to be able to take. And I, and I challenge you to actually go and take them and be honest with yourself, right? Don't try and, like, you know, make yourself, you know, better than you want. Because, like, that's what we want to do. We don't want to look at the muck in our lives. Um, and so uh, that's what we're going to do. And so the other preface is Claire's going to talk about for married couples, if you're single, divorced, or broken up for just dating, this still also applies for you on the married aspect of it too. So, so let's get remarried. Recommit to your daily, recommit daily to your spouse by seeing yourself as the one. Uh, for both, write down three new promises to each other in the notebook, followed by why they deserve these promises. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. All right. Um, we're gonna take bro three minutes. Okay. Three minutes as the band comes up. Okay. We're just gonna take three qu quick minutes. Write in your notebook. Write in your notes. If you're with your spouse, this is the perfect time to, like, completely ignore them, okay? All right? You're not going to get in trouble for this. I want you all to take three minutes to write three things to promise to each other. Here's what that looks like because we're going to do the same thing too. A promise is, is a way of making a marker in your life to recommit to a new behavior, okay? When you share that with someone, you bring in accountability in that relationship, what that looks like for singles is if clearly you don't have anybody right now, which is okay, write to your future spouse. Write a promise to them and why they deserve it. 
the deserving aspect it, uh, aspect of it is to give you some some skin in the game. It's easy to be like, oh, Claire, I will clean more. There's no weight to that, right? She's, she's going to say, I can't. Uh, I can commit to a room that you will never have to clean again, okay? Um, there's a closet. There's a pantry. I can definitely do that one. Um, but, like, things like this, right? It, it doesn't breed accountability. Why they deserve it is important. So, let's go ahead and take this three minutes now, all right? We'll have a marker on ours as well. Three quick minutes. I know this sounds uncomfortable, all right? Even if you're not writing down, maybe etch it in your, in your mind. But let's go ahead and do that and be practical because, like I said, I got trust issues. So let's do this right now. Mm. 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 I'm going to give you guys a soundtrack while you do it. That's the remix. All right. Oh, we should write too. Yeah. 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 While you're still writing, that's totally fine, all right? Um, we just figured if we go first, it makes it easier for you guys to see what the example is. Um, and so, uh, do you, do you want to go first? I'll go first. No, wait, let me. Okay, fine. Dang it. I said I promised to try to say sorry more. I'm sorry. Can you say that a little louder? What? Not repeating. <coughs> it's okay. I have a mic, too. I promised to say sorry more. Let's go. All right. Why I deserve it? Because, you know, I'm, I'm always right. So um, we'll go with that. Uh, so for me, <laughs> God, that was terrible. Uh, so for me, um, I promise to always, always, <sighs> this is a hard one for me, all right. To always be as vulnerable as you need. Uh, because I know you deserve someone who is emotionally available and open to being open to you being right sometimes. It hurt, but I can do that. And so I think, like, even for us, um, she didn't know, okay, so Claire didn't know I was going to do this, and so uh, she's already freaking out. Um, but I just want you guys to know that this week when we prayed earlier that it's been a rough week, um, we're not kidding. We know for a fact, like, the enemy didn't want us to even be up here. Um, because what you're seeing is is literally God moving in my wife um, and that being spilled over into our marriage. It's easy now for me to do what I do here because I've gotten used to seeing the same faces. This is my bread and butter. But for someone like Claire, this is like nerve wracking. Um, but I've always known that she has that in her uh, to be able to not only like give you good tidbits, but to love on you from this space. Um, and I just want to say, yo, not only did you do a good job, bruh, nobody left. See? You did yeah, a great job. No, oh, no, we're not going to point. <laughs> it's okay. We'll find them later. Thank y'all. Um, and so I'm proud of you for doing this. And, and, I, and I hope that in anything that we've said today, like this is actually the thing that kind of moves it forward for anyone else is that we didn't start off like this we didn't 
we started off doing it the wrong way. Um, and then when we recommitted to doing it God's way, uh, he's just been blessing moments like this in our lives. And so we just hope the same for you guys. Um, and so we know this is also a very serious moment where the enemy can rob that, um, you know, from, from you guys. And so we also understand that prayer has been the thing that kind of helped us through our week as we were preparing this message. And we want to provide that for you guys as well. And so we're going to go into a time of worship that's also going to have a time of prayer as well. Claire and I are going to be over here at the prayer wall. If you need prayer, I want to challenge you to do this, to clock into this moment, okay? Worship is a perfect time for you to set the stage to call him. Worship should be the moment where you're dialing that number. And then once you get on the line with God, for you to really be open and honest about what you want, where you're at, and where you're going. And I guarantee you, he'll respond. Prayer is what it sounds like. All right? And so if you need prayer, matter of fact, we need prayer. All right? Wherever you're at in your relationship, your circumstance, whatever, come and get prayer. Come to the altar. It's yours right? He's just always been here wanting to respond. If you need prayer from one of us, one of our staff, we'll be over there at the prayer corner. And so I want to invite you guys to do this now um, while we're going into worship next. Amen? Amen. Um, Father, thank you so much already for what you're about to do, God. I just ask that uh, you continue to move the hearts of men, God. I ask, that, Lord, that you set the stage for what is about to happen in the next few minutes, God. And that if there's anyone that is um, even hesitant, God, I just ask that you just remove that completely. And you just allow them to just uh, call into you, God. In your name we pray. Come on, let's stand on our feet. We're going to praise and worship together.
where the other You are worthy, Jesus. Day and night, day and night, night and day, let it sit. Day and night, night and day, let it set right. Day and night, night and day, let it set right. Day and night, night and day, let it set Oh, day and night, day and night, night and day, let it set right. Well, thank you for joining us this week, and we'll see you guys next week. You guys are dismissed.